now. It says connected. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. And checking that because that happens sometimes. Sometimes you have to set up the audio a little bit different. And I forgot to do that this time. So thank you so much. Um, what I was talking about, and I will kind of start over. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> is we had several applications to IFN and many of them didn't have any name or contact information on it. So if you're somebody who applied, especially considering we had this in so many, so many people, I put up the links kind of fast. So it was probably, you know, I always believe that it's always a leadership error. Um, I'm always somebody who I take full responsibility of everything and anything that goes on. And if that happened, then, you know, resubmit your application. So then we make sure that you get that. And if you don't hear back, usually, you know, acceptance or not, we'll let you know within the next, you know, probably we'll let you know within the next week. So either way, you will get a response. If you don't get a response within this week, then reach out to me personally, uh, Dr. Lauren at nursepractpreneurs.com. And you can follow up there. But many of them, some of them, however, uh, seemed that they were wanting to be a patient because the application seemed more focused around their own health and or the health of their family members. So if that's the case, you know, I wasn't really set up for that. I accidentally streamed to my private. Um, okay, the bit.ly link did not work yesterday. No, you may have not. It does seem like I'm having, we're having some issues with that. Okay, so let me see here. What'll be the easiest way to try to fix this. I will not do, let me go straight into JotForm. I'm gonna do this right now while we're live. And I did have one person who, I, I mean, not one person, I had actually seven who submitted the form but here is, all right, I'm just gonna drop the link here. Share as a template. See, this is where I need my VAs to be live with me so then I can keep teaching while we're doing this. <clears throat> I have to folder apps, but my team doesn't work on the weekend, so. <clears throat> All right, here is the actual, I'm gonna drop it in the chat so you can grab it there. I did have some applications, so it seemed to have been working, but all right, Kristen, I'm sending that to you specifically. And then I'm gonna go into the full chat here. Good morning, good morning, everybody. See the good mornings and everything. So there is the form for um, the CMEs. If you stay on for the full time today and you were on yesterday, uh, you can put in put in a note there that you were in both just to uh, to be sure. And then I'll get those back out to you. So they, I know that they were working for at least some people because we had several apply. But we, I mean, it does seem weird that like on one of the forms, like I said, we had five of them where there wasn't any of the contact information filled out. So. I don't know for sure if what happened there was the form itself, like the, I don't know. That's, that I really don't have an explanation for why, but, and then I will also drop the link for IFN. I'll drop the link to IFN here at the end, though, if you have any issues with that. I'm um, just so we can kind of get started here. Thanks. I see case sensitive. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe so. Thank you. I bet so. I bet the I bet it is case sensitive. Some of those letters are, are capitalized so you can see it easier. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love that. Um, all 
right, and then let's get in our slides. I'm gonna pull up the slides now. We have the FIM slides from yesterday, and then I was wanting to add in some slides with, try to get us back to the start here. I also wanna talk about some of the chemicals in foods because especially with, if you see my personal account on Facebook, I posted up about my you know, son getting candy. And while I'm not somebody, I do believe in balance. I'm not somebody who absolutely never says that my child can have candy or anything like that. Um, I wish that I could, I wish that I could just completely keep him, him, both of them, you know, as my, as my infant grows up, uh, more keep them all sheltered from that. But I think I'm going to talk a little bit about that since once I realized that I'm also streaming to, uh, my private, I'm pretty sure I am streaming to my private Facebook. I thought, you know what, this will be my opportunity to really kind of share, um, why I am so crazy about that and why I want so much for my children to not get these chemicals because it really is, it really is toxic. It really and truthfully is. So I'm also going to share about those some. So we're going to download those slides if we can get them to come up here. And then we're going to get started, guys. Sorry, this is taking a little bit longer this time. Okay, and I'll come back to that here in a moment. All right. <clears throat> okay, so um, kind of starting off some of the some of the material here today that we're going to talk about. Um, we we alluded to this some yesterday, but I really think that it is you know worth kind of remembering and and seeing like why this is so. I'm going to hide that so it's not distracting from the from the education um so why it is it's just really important for us to realize this i think that there is a huge mindset in our culture that oh a little bit of something really bad isn't that big of a deal and or if they are plowing in on the food then which i'm probably going to get shut down right for you talking this candid about stuff but if it's you know if it's allowed that much in in that for us and there's a really said about that. I actually had um, some personal comments who came to me and I was like, you know, I, I'm not going to respond to this in um, in messengers in messaging or comments, you know, stuff like that, because it can come off a wrong way because I totally understand that I used to eat a really, really bad diet. And, you know, people say that well, I think a lot of people think that, oh, you're lucky or something like that. I was like, no, it's really hard. Like I've actually been myself hooked on really bad foods. And not been somebody who was very healthy. You know, my, my freshman year of college, I really prided myself on eating tons of really bad food. And I was, you know, thin through high school. And then I gained 20 pounds my freshman year. So 20 pounds in one year is quite considerable. If I would have stayed in that trajectory, you know, you can imagine where my health would be right now. And I'm not saying that gaining that weight was a bad thing as far as, you know, look wise, I'm saying it's bad. It's bad because your body's not supposed to go through that much, you know, growth in one year. And obviously I was fueling that's what you're feeling it behind that, which is, it was all really bad food. It was fried, you know, I was eating nothing, but I was at a uh, university of Oklahoma and I was just simply eating fried, horrible for you food. And, you know, it's, that's also the environmental the, uh, the effects of that on our overall health, not just the fat, like we gotten so focused in this nation on fat and calories and those type of things that we've completely lost sight of what is, you know, lacking in our diet whenever we eat that bad for you stuff. So it's not just that, oh, the fried onion rings were bad for me and the fried breading around those onion rings were horrible for me. It's that the heating those foods up and heating up that oil to that level changes, chemically changes those oils to where they become toxic and inflammatory in the body. And it's the lack of the healthy stuff. So for years and years and years, I wasn't getting the you know, natural probiotics and prebiotics that are built into food. I wasn't getting the natural things. We think about fiber, we think about carbs, we think about all of those things. And that's an important part of our diets. I'm not, I'm not saying that that isn't, but we're missing the big, big picture here. And because of that, 
we have a huge epidemic of just chronic diseases and are on the rise. So it's not just, you know, we focus so much on weight and we see the before and the afters and, you know, I'm not knocking that it's, you know, that's, if it empowers other people, I've been in the health and wellness world before. And if it empowers people, then I'm all on board, but it's not about image. It's not about, you know, the number on a, on a silly scale. It's about what we're putting into our body and what our body is lacking. And it's really incredible. So I alluded before, this is one of the things that I'm actually building a phone app. It'll be my second one. I built one of my, uh, whenever I did my dissertation several years ago, <laughs> more years than I want to count, but, um, I'm building a second phone app and I'm going to be going over the organic acids test and the organic acids test is really fantastic because you can see what is somebody missing in the cofactors. Like I said before, you might have enough B12 in your body, but you're not utilizing that B12 because you don't have the cofactors associated with it. And maybe your mitochondria are not functioning well and you're fatigued because of that, you know. But just a kind of side note, CoQ10 a lot of times is a really, really great medication for that. Um, I used to use my family practice, which I recently left, uh, bittersweet feelings there. But when I was doing that, I would put people on CoQ10 if they were having muscular cramps for statins with, with statins, so a, st a statin medication. And it would help a lot of them get rid of it so they could stay on that statin medication. Well, it's refueling the mitochondria. It's allowing our muscular function to, uh, to work at the optimal level that CoQ10, they're giving that mitochondria back the energy that it needs and helping them with those muscle cramps. But, you know, CoQ10 also works with helping with fatigue. A lot of times, you know, even with, you know, there's no coincidence, right? This is no coincidence. Like people say that, oh, mitochondrial dysfunction isn't real. Well, before I even knew from a functional level what I was doing for my patients, I knew that whenever I gave them a statin and then, you know, they said, oh, I'm too tired. I can't take this. And it's so crazy to me that many, uh, many, many conventional individuals will say that it's in their head. They just believe that it's in their head. And I've always thought, you know, I don't know. So many people come back to me with that same answer that I just can't believe that, that it's all just in their head. And I would start them on the CoQ10 and they would also, their fatigue would also go away. So to me, that is just clinical. There's a big difference between book practice and then clinical practice. And your perception changes a little bit after you've been in, in actual practice, it's, it's going to change a little bit because you start seeing things that you can't really, you can't deny. And there's just always a difference in a theoretical outcome and in a practical outcome. And these patients would you know, feel better whenever I'd started them on the CoQ10, they would not only the muscular cramps would stop, but also their fatigue would decrease. And it's because we're actually helping that mitochondria to rebuild and allow it to have uh, the energy that it needs in order for us to have the energy that we need. So and we're not going to talk about mitochondrial dysfunction really uh, on here too much, um, but... Um, I'm getting like notifications on here. Um, speak the truth. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. So um, that's a big part of it also. And uh, we're not addressing the broad inflammation. So in, in doing that, we can help to really reverse a lot of the diseases. And I think this is very, has become very, what's it, catchphrasy or what, trendy, trending, right? We always say that something's trending and it's not just about trending. It's really about the science that backs it up. Uh, gut health and the gut brain connection is a huge thing that we have completely ignored. This is something I love to help other individuals with. And if you are a provider who, you know, you love mental health, you really need to start looking more into the gut brain connection and how important that is. Let me know if I'm, you know, not alone in this scenario, but I myself have noticed, so I have extensive, anyone who knows me knows that I've, I've had gut issues in, in my past. And, um, you know, I, so anyhow, I won't go into that too much, but I've no, I, you know, I personally noticed that whenever I would eat junky stuff, I would feel really grouchy and icky and even depressed, even feeling like really just sluggish, you know, I would call it sluggish, but really I was feeling depressed and it's just incredible. That gut brain connection is so strong. Our gut actually makes, so uh, drop it in the chat if you know. I know we have some functional people who've been jumping on these, which I love. Thank you. Um, drop it. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this. You know, put a little little tag here so I remember to come back to this. But I want to 
put a quiz out here, how much serotonin, so if you know if serotonin is the good, one of our uh, feel good neurotransmitters, we think about that in the brain all the time. Whenever we start somebody on SSRIs, um, the, all, you know, there's a gamut of medications there that we're starting them on to help increase that serotonin, you know, decrease the reuptake re in our brain, uh, not in the functional world, but in the conventional world, we will. Oh, you know, were thinking about in the brain, how much, this is the question, how much serotonin do you believe is made in the gut, is produced in the gut? Like drop that in the chat if you have any idea and bonus points, just fun bonus points, if you actually know. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's considerable, I'll tell you that much, it's considerable. And the, the issue is that if your gut is not working correctly, then it can't focus. Awesome. Somebody said 90 to 95%, right? Off the, it says Facebook user, um, change your name if you can, so I can see um, who you are specifically, but thank you. Absolutely. That individual is a hundred percent correct. So tell me if that doesn't blow your mind, if you've been just practicing, you know, regular functional or regular conventional medicine and, or you are a patient and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that your provider's wrong for, for doing what they're doing, starting your SSRI, but we really need to be addressing that gut health. That is going to make a huge, huge difference. And the longer and longer we go eating a diet that doesn't have, oh, that's okay. Okay. It's elegant. Um, I need to maybe figure that out myself on your end. And then I can start, um, I can start having people, um, I can do a little education at the beginning of it. So I'm not sure how to tell you how to do it either. I'm pretty, I'm not new to restream, but I've not used it a whole bunch. I've, I've carried the platform for a long time and not, not used it a lot. So yeah, we need to be focusing on that. That's a huge part of it. So, you know, coming back, coming through this from a functional model, you know, a lot of the time, so anxiety and depression, that's one thing that you are going to go ahead and do what we call a GI map on that individual. And the GI map is going to look at, you know, the good, the bad, the overgrowth, we're checking for yeast, we're checking for a parasitic infection in the gut. Now, a parasitic infection is not necessarily, I really rolled my eyes at that the first time I said that, or the first time I read about that, I thought, oh yeah, right. Like there's parasitic, chronic parasitic infections that are hurting people. And I've not heard about them in my traditional training. And whew, the first time I had one come back and I was able to treat it, it was really, I just got it. It wasn't even me, right? It was somebody else, but I was so excited and they were so excited and they started getting better. Now it's, it can be really difficult to, to get rid of. And sometimes, you know, it's as much as we love being able to give somebody an answer for why they feel this way. That person was a, a fibro patient. And I want to say she also had a second autoimmune, but it was really exciting for, for me, but, and they did get better, but it's, it's, it is something that you have to kind of stay on. You can't, you can't, uh, keep on feeding into the infection, uh, yeast overgrowth is something else that can cause a lot of issues. And I mean, these people feel really just run down really. Bleh. So gut health is another thing that we often have to check on. If you are having somebody who is, of course, if they're having the constipation, the bloating, the flatulence, if they're having all those things. And of course, we're also we're going to do a GI map for that. But that's not the only reason why we might remember when we talked yesterday about that leaky gut and how important it is for us to get those tight junctures junctions back tight. So we're not leaking out because that's causing the broad inflammation within the body. Uh, one in two adults do have a chronic disease, which is just really that's a lot, right? That's a lot. One in two adults are not in what we would consider their end of life years. You know, 50% of the population is not. So we shouldn't be seeing that. And it's, you know, we're seeing people in their thirties or young thirties having chronic issues with, you know, essential, like I said, essential, which sometimes we still, you know, don't always know. And it can't, it has to be essential, but essential hypertension. Um, we talked, you know, about reasons in our environment, why that could be happening. Um, and then one in four have multiple, have multiple diseases. And guys, these are not like, we've really gotten to a place in our, in our world where we, it's, it's almost just accepted. Like if, if we get, you know, somebody gets you know, diagnosed with high blood pressure or diabetes, well, my, my parents had, my family had before I was, I was bound to get it. And we just really accept that as something that is unchangeable. And, and I want us to really empower each other. And I want us to empower our patients and to, to make a change where we're literally looking at the quality of life, not based upon, you know, what's palatable and what's not palatable, but, but based upon how much better we feel. And don't get me wrong. I am in no way, in no way saying that 
you know, just eating healthy is super easy. I know that it's really not. I went through, I'll share transparently with you. Whenever I started making my healthy changes, I almost went into a, to a, a binge eating disorder because I went to a real restrictive diet and then I couldn't stop myself whenever I'd be around something and that was healthy. And I still have some tendencies, right? If, if I allow myself a little bit of something, sometimes I can't stop still. So that's why it's just, it's just not in my house. So I completely, I, um, emphasize with people and I'm in no way passing judgment because it is the hardest thing ever. You know, an alcoholic can completely get rid of alcohol. Somebody who has an addiction to food cannot. Um, and it's just, those cravings are really, really hard. You know, we could talk about leptin and we could talk about ghrelin. Ghrelin is our hormone that makes us really hungry and you know, leptin supposed to help give us the satiety and those can get really messed up. And the further we get from a healthy baseline weight, the more those can get, can get messed up. Um, you know, excessive adipose actually changes the hormones in our body. That makes us more irritable. That makes us have more issues. That makes us have more cravings. So it is a very, very, and that is why in IFN, uh, it's the only program that I'm aware of out there that we don't just teach people, you know, this is, this is the certain diet, like this person should be on Mediterranean, this person should be on a FODMAP. We don't just teach those specific things. We teach you how to work with your patients to make those changes happen. You know, I give my patients um, information and training on how to help them deal with the psychological side of making those changes and being able to make them for life and how to identify, you know, negative triggers, how to have a different mindset, breaking your know, mindset, such as all or nothing thinking where you know, a lot of times that's something that a lot of people get really trapped in is they think, you know, well, I have to be really, really healthy or it just doesn't count, you know. All to, because they, they're stuck in that calorie mindset and they're doing the math in their head and the calories. And they're saying that, you know, well, I did really, really good. And I kept my calories at, I'm pulling an arbitrary number, eight, 1500, you know, 1500 calories. And then I blew it and I had a thousand calories for dinner. And I know my workout only took about 300 calories based on my Fitbit. So because of that, you know, I know that I actually still gained. I still was in the positive on calories. So they look at that as a, as a no, it doesn't change anything. First of all, it's not just calorie and calorie out game. Uh, there are many different things that occur during that, but also it's one, it's about, it's about overall health. How much nutrients was you giving your, were you giving your body during those meals that you had healthy, healthy times, you know, those type of things and helping people get rid of that all or nothing mindset and still focusing on, on the positive in that. So, um, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but I think that's all really important things. And that's something that, you know, whenever, especially as a functional provider, I recommend that you have those built into your, into your programs, into the, you know, a lot of, most of us do more of a retainer system where you're working with the patient and they get to choose, you know, how many you know, visits they want a month. They're more in the, in the lead seat than the provider is, meaning that, you know, if you need me, you think you need me weekly, we're going to do that. If you think you need me monthly, we're going to do that. And they get to kind of choose that and based on, you know, which retainer they, they choose. And some of that can come into, you know, I think it should almost always have to do with, with that mindset training and helping, helping individuals. Um, an average meeting with a provider is only 10 to 12 minutes in the regular world. And those of us who have practiced that before know that is very stressful for both ends. It is not fun. The, the provider, it does not have time. Like we spend so we spend, you spend, we're at regular world. You spend so much time charting. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's really, I can't even, I can't even, it's, it's really hard. And then to the patient, they're like, how can I ever get that in 10 to 12 minutes? But you know, that's usually what kind of is, is being pushed um, in order to, to move that bottom line. And it's, it's not helping us. And it's, it's not really actually getting the, the client, the help that they really need. So, okay. So here is, um, on the functional world. So we're looking at, you know, chronic infection, immune dysregulation, um, that is kind of, you know, that's the, the pentacle of kind of what starts happening, right? And we have cellular dysfunction. Let's, let's start, let me start at the bottom. I, I, I kind of, I kind of actually, you know, we need to start really down here. So the life sp lifestyle exposure environment, um, that is really, you know, kind of the foundation of, of how things start kind of breaking down. And then we start having nutrient imbalances, gut imbalances, the, um, the uh, HPA access starts breaking down. 
and we have, we start having more symptoms. Cellular dysfunction occurs, especially at the mitochondrial level, um, toxic burden, hormone imbalance. Those also, we're going to talk about toxin burden a lot. I'm about to switch slides here and I've just got to get those actually, um, pulled up here. We're going to talk about the toxic burden burden because, you know, I just really, you know, I saw, I saw somebody that posted their day and, you know, a little bit here and there isn't going to hurt anything. And yes, that is maybe, you know, a little bit here and there is much better than a whole bunch here and there. I will 100% agree with that. And I'm on board with any changes like that. However, if you think about it, let's say we're only decreasing our sugar by 30 grams a, a or sorry, three grams a day, just three, one, two, three grams a day, decreasing that sugar by three grams a day. This is for our children. This is for us as individuals. Um, that's 90 grams of sugar a month. That's like saying no to, that's like saying no to a full soda or to, you know, a couple of candy bars or something like that. And that's just three, like you wouldn't even notice, you would not even notice decreasing by three grams, but in a month that adds up to really quite a bit. So that's why, you know, our typical goal like is zero grams of added sugar, but you know, 30 grams of added sugar or less is why I really try to start people out with. And it's hard to hit that it's in barbecue sauce, it's in ketchup and then all of the things. And well, I say that it's, you could just really see how that adds up on our body and how this really is so impactful on our, on our health, whether it's, you know, the, the impactful it is by decreasing it or how impactful it is, um, on the negative and the negative side of that. And then chronic infection and immune dysregulation starts to kind of ensue. Okay. I think what we're going to do now though, because we were back to kind of where we started before. Now I want to just shift gears a little bit. Uh, because, you know, we've talked about, we've talked about kind of the, the impact of gastrointestinal and we've talked about immune dysregulation. I really want to talk a little bit about the toxins and let me get here at source presentations. I got to upload the slides again. Hopefully I'll be able to, um, if not, then I might just, I might speak and, and that'll be fine too. But let me know, guys, is this helpful to you? Is this something that you are learning something, reminding you of things that you once knew? Uh, drop in the chat. I love being really interactive with you all. That's why these platforms like this are, are easier to get set up and everyone can just kind of jump on and they don't have to find the link for the exact room, you know, like you would in like Zoom or something along those lines. But the thing that I don't like about it is I don't see you and we can't have an actual discussion. I love having more of a discussion with individuals and it, it just that, I mean, that really does help, you know, from a, from a learner's learner's hack. I love helping people with like neuroplasticity and helping them uh, make that neuroplasticity more, more flexible and to where you can remember things easier. The more you can interact with something, the better you're going to learn it and retain it. You know, that's one of the things that whenever I'm learning something, I'm not just like, remember I was, this is the first thing that came to mind. It's really off topic, but first time I was learning leads and you know, which side of the heart is, is being looked at. I would do like, I would actually like lead one, lead two, lead three, lead four, and like five and six, the lateral um, side of the heart, which, which lead it's looking on the EKG. And I would do that physically, right? I would, I would do those numbers. And it looks like I was doing some kind of like, I'm just doing it by myself right now. I'm live doing it looking strange, I'm sure. But um, actually physically doing those things and interacting with the material, you will be able to, to learn it faster and easier and you'll retain it for longer. So um, the more senses you can, you know, if it's feel, touch, smell, sound, those type of things, the better you are to actually remember things. And environmental triggers is uploading. It's taking a while though. So I'm going to go ahead and start talking about it. And then hopefully once it's, hopefully it'll be uploaded here pretty soon. And then I can show you the actual slides. Okay. One that I wanted to, okay. I've harped on this one a lot, but we'll go ahead and talk about it really really quickly because it is really important if others don't know about this um, and it's getting to be pretty well known and accepted. So that is really the, the good thing about this, but dyes and colors in, you know, try to find me a kid's candy that doesn't have red dyes in it, doesn't have uh, yellow dyes in it. And, you know, we think about it's not a big deal, but oh my goodness, think about how much they're getting, you know, in bulk 
everything has those in there. And like, as far as like candies and that type of thing goes, and you can get healthier ones for candies. And I try to switch those out for my kiddo whenever he gets given, you know, the bad kind of stuff. But um, they are associated with ADHD. They are neurotoxic, neurobehavior problems do ensue with children. And I have, have had individuals from all across, you know, the gamut on um, parents, looks like my slides are still processing, um, who, have, who have said, you know, I've noticed a change in my child. Whenever I was in conventional practice, uh, that was the first place we would start is I'd say, okay, do they have any red dyes? Let's eliminate those. And lo and behold, for a lot of children, that would really get rid of it. And even though, even though some may be able to function at a higher level, I was diagnosed ADHD as a child too. Um, able to function, but I'm still able to, I was never on vacations, able to get through three degrees, uh, formal degrees and several certifications afterwards. I'm not bragging, but I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it is possible to treat without, uh, medication. There's obviously it's a spectrum. I do understand that, but, um, with the, with the diet, you know, it might not just be totally overt or think about just the cumulative effect on our body over long term. Um, so, you know, I really, really talk about, about the red dyes and the yellow dyes because we have the, the studies to back it up, but really more and more is coming in on, um, blue dyes and greens. I mean, I just don't know if there's actually one that's actually better than the other. There's just some that are further studied, uh, BHT and BHA, B or sorry, T, T as in Tom, T as in boy, H as in horse, Q as in queen. Um, these all increase the risk of cancer to the immune system. It is, here's the fun part. Here's the really fun part. And yes, I'm being a little sarcastic there. The fun part about this, that they're antioxidant preservatives. They can be labeled as that. So yes, Kristen, I love that. She said, we do hundred percent organic and zero sugar. We are right there with you. Oh, I love that. I would, you know, I am never somebody who is above asking for help. I would love to know if you could put in the chat how you keep your children away from it in the public, because that's where I have the biggest issue. And, um, and then it's really hard because then you always have to kind of be the bad guy. It's not fun. It's not fun. Right. Um, I see someone said it was case sensitive. Perhaps that was the problem. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Because that is really hard. Um, really, really hard because you don't want your kiddo to be the one that just doesn't get, you know, the, the goodies and that kind of stuff. And like I said, I try to switch them out whenever he comes home with them, but it's still hard to be out and about. Um, so these are, um, long chemical words, butylated hydroxy and a soul. Oh, great. My slide just popped up. Let me get on the right page here. And then we may even go back. I could talk forever on these. Um, and then our full course, we have like 55 slides, 55 slides. And I, of course, don't touch on every single toxin out there because there's no, there's just no way. But um, these are the ones that have the most studies to back them up. Um, so here we go. Processed meats. Okay. Processed meats. We're also going to talk about processed meats here in a little bit. I'm actually going to probably go back to the, the previous slide because I really want to talk about processed meats, even though it's, it's pretty well known by this time, but, um, and ready to eat cereal. Now, why may this, this may and may not even be on the ingredients list. Okay. Why? Because the bags themselves can be sprayed with this. It's not sprayed onto the food, but it affects the food in that it keeps it preserved. So to me, that should still be an ingredient, but it's not because it's the bags that are sprayed with it a lot of the times. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's it increases the risk of cancers and alters the immune system. But it is in cereals advertised towards kids. You know, I used to and I didn't really care who saw me, who saw us and who heard. As a matter of fact, I was kind of I was just proud of my son. Maybe this is maybe this is too harsh, but I'm going to be transparent with you. Uh, whenever we would go past the cereal aisle, I would tell my kiddo that that's a poison aisle. Gage, whenever he was like little, little. <laughs> he'd say, "Mom, on the poison aisle." <laughs> that's really kind of probably bad at me because I don't, I don't want to like advertly, you know, scare other kids or anything like that. I probably shouldn't have shared that, but um, and. 
and I didn't really, I didn't share it for him to be loud about it, but you know, kids are, they really just say whatever's on their mind. So this is one that's also really, really well known, the nitrates, the nitrites. I mean, it's well known enough that we now see it on packages that say, you know, nitrate free, nitrite free. Um, but the thing about it that I really want to touch in on is, and I had this, I had this board, anyone who was in my practice knows that this was on my board for a long time. Um, but just two servings a week increases our risk of colon cancer in adults. And it actually increases that to higher than that of a smoker for lung cancer pretty severe. That's pretty significant. That's significant enough that like, I'm thankful that cigarettes have a warning label on them, but where are we at when it comes to the food? Where are we at with that? And it increases the risk of leukemia in children. So this isn't just something that is, you know, hot dogs at, you know, a, a meal. I can and again, you know, I'm not, I, I share this because I don't want people to think that I'm like passing judgment if my kid gets offered a corn dog or something like that out and about, um, I don't make him not be the only kid who doesn't eat, but we don't do it in the house. And that's just how we try to at least ward it off as much as we can. And you do have to, like I said, two servings a week um, is what increases our risk. So my kids definitely get up much less than that. And it increases the risk, but um, sandwich meat and hot dogs, like it's just, it's really it's really terrifying, isn't it? So um, parabens, we know about these a lot enough that we also see these on labels. So this isn't anything that's probably brand new to most of us here. Um, but the uh, propyl paraben, endocrine disruptor, and is linked to early puberty in girls, which we know is on the rise. Weight gain and resistant loss. So parabens act as... Um, they act as endocrine disruptors, but they also act as uh, xenoestrogens, the word I'm looking for, xenoestrogens, where they act like an estrogen within the body. So remember we spoke yesterday, I love whenever we start seeing connections, right? This is where these are the things you're going to be screening your patients for. I love seeing connections like this. Do you remember what we talked about yesterday? For those of us who were here yesterday in autoimmune disease, 80% associated with estrogen dominance in females, right? So weight gain resistant, uh, resistant weight loss and being an, a uh, hormone disruptor an endocrine disruptor and, uh, causing imbalance in our hormones. So there's so many different things that it's really hard to, to sometimes narrow it down, but we just stay educated. We find out a good baseline on what is the patient's exposures? Where do we think that they have the highest rate of, of exposure and their toxic load and, and eliminate from there? Um, increased risk for breast cancer and estrogen dominant cancers. Uh, oh, I had right here due to uh, xenoestrogen properties. I can hit ahead of myself a lot. Um, developmental issues in children. Okay. Mm, homeschooling. I have been tempted. <laughs> so they can avoid most, most public issues. Yeah. Awesome. I love that so much. Cook three meals a day, you know, and just sweet potatoes, their sweetest thing. Oh, I love that. I make, with egg and some, we need to, we're both crunchy mommies. We need to really connect a little bit more. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, yes. Love that. Egg. Yes. Thanks for the party. Absolutely. Um, you know, on that note, we'll get back to the slide, but, um, something in, in her message made me think of something else I wanted to share. Uh, cook three meals a day. Oh, did you know this is this isn't necessarily functional, but she put in here. I cook three meals a day. Now, obviously, for a lot of families, that's going to be really, really hard. Um, we do leftovers and that type of stuff. So then most all of our meals at home are um, are homemade, you know, even if they aren't made like we do batch cooking and that kind of stuff. And then um, it becomes much easier to be able to do that. I don't physically cook three meals a day. Hats off to you, sister, that you do like awesome. The thing about that, this isn't functional. This is it, but this is functional, right? This, this is still functional because it is a, it is an underlying issue. Children who are, who are brought up in a home, who they have regular nighttime 
just the evening meals is what the studies have shown. I'm sure that the more meals you have, the better it is, but that have routine evening sit down, not sit down in front of the television, but sit down meals have lower rates of, um, you know, this is such a harsh word. I don't, I can't think of the word off, off um, top of my head, but the delinquency, meaning that they have lower risk of, of children who are, you know, who become uh, wrapped up into things such as um, drugs and illegal things and stealing and theft. And they have, and it's part of it, it's just that, that part of a feeling of culture and belonging that the physical, so this is not talking about the food, this is talking about that physical belonging. They have that physical, psychological, fundamental sense of belonging. And that makes a lot of sense, especially whenever you think about why are individuals, why do individuals even go into, a lot of times they go into gangs, things like that. And that's how it kind of rolls, rolls into it for them. Gangs give people a sense of belonging. People feel belonging. You know, others don't get you, but I get you. And that's how they get wrapped in or, you know, they, they do certain things. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I should be talking about this kind of stuff live, but um, they do certain things that allow people to feel like, oh, they belong or they've hit an elitist, you know, they've, they've done certain things that are usually not, not good and not, you know, of, of the Lord and they've done things and that proves their status. It's that, that sense of belonging. So whenever a child has been brought up, eating dinner with their family every single night, or at least majority of nights, they have that sense of belonging and they don't go searching for it in other places, such as gangs or such. And, you know, when, where people are doing things like that and sneaking around doing bad things, they have this strong connectivity to each other because it's us against them. And when a child is brought up feeling that they're already part of, of them, that they already have that, they don't go searching for it otherwise. So that is really important. And I just really want to commend you on that Chris, and that's really incredible that you, that you already do so much with your family and um, just the importance of that. And, and I say that, you know, that's not functional medicine. I get that, but it is functional, right? That is, that is, a, that is an underlying issue with, with someone that maybe will have, you know, uh, anxiety or depression later in life. So we are at the 45 mark. So for each of these, we have to be present for at least an hour or for at least the 45 minutes, but we're going to go on a little bit more. So what I've said by that, what I'm saying by that is, you know, um, you can, so there is, and I have dropped in the link there, I think the IFN, I believe that that was the IFN application. And then let me get the, we're going to do a few more, but let me get, maybe let me go, let me see here. Go back to jot form here. Let me drop the link for it, for the, for the credits. I want everyone to get their credit for certain, like I said, email me if you are not able to get those. Um, we've had several who have done the replay and... Here's the link. Okay. So here is the link for, I'm just going to drop it in the chat this time. I'll still put it up, I guess. Um, but there it is. And it's true. I called the poison owl too. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yay. You know, it made me feel so bad because I did feel kind of bad. I was like, I probably shouldn't share that. <laughs> so I sometimes I'm like, Lauren, you're not supposed to go live. You shouldn't be going live. Um, but because I'm, I'm very transparent. It's almost to a fault. Um, I'll just like say, say things, but, um, so there is in the chat right there, you can see that. And then I am going to put this up again. I know it has worked for some people. So I'm going to put that up there, the banner up there. So you can see, uh, so you can see that as well. Um, all right. So we talked about some of the different kept bear pins. There's, there's tons of them, but why they are so important to avoid. Um, and we'll go for a little bit longer so we make sure we get in our 45 uh, minutes total. Um, titanium dioxide. So I believe this is also one that yay finally hit the, um, so we had this, we had this slide up in our functional course before it even became, and this is the one that was in Skittles, it's Skittles, which is not just Skittles, like Skittles got attacked, but it's a lot of different candies that have this. And um, changes to the GI tract, we know from a functional level how important that is for many different things now. 
um, and the immune system, which we've also talked about that. See, so hopefully, hopefully even just in these two days, we've just been talking about this for two days. Like I've just picked out a few slides here and there and not even, you know, we haven't dove into every little detail. We haven't dove into every little part of the organic acids or the GI map or, you know, the strands of, of prebiotics, probiotics that are associated to weight gain and weight loss. And it is literally every single time I screen a patient and they have trouble gaining weight, then they're uh, low in the saccharides. If they have um, issue with gaining weight, then they're, then they have the same exact uh, probiotics on their GI map that are, that are their commensal bacteria. So I meant, I'm sorry, commensal bacteria. And it's just, it's no coincidence, right? Um, so the GI system is so important to overall health. And we talked about, you know, weight gain, how resistant weight gain leads into our anxiety, depression, messes with our gut. So I hope you can see just from, I just pulled out a few different slides and how we're talking about something totally different and how that completely affects something else. Like we're talking about this and how it affects both the GI system and the immune system. And we just spoke about autoimmunity and these don't, these are different these are different topics, but you can see how it's all, it all, uh, comes together. Let me know if that doesn't make sense, but it's, it's all, it's a holistic, we should have a holistic view in our care and we should have a holistic view because the body is holistic. You cannot just separate the gut out, separate. Now I'm not getting, I'm not, that's not me bashing specialties or anything like that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that at all. And you know, that is, that is still a good, um, like I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a bad, a bad model because of certain scenarios. However, many of the things that we deal about in the functional world are very, very interconnected and they're still interconnected, um, in a large way Like you can still focus on, on one specialty on one area, but you are probably, you are still kind of diving into the adrenals. You're still diving into, uh, nutritional deficiencies because all of those things can still affect, can still affect many parts of our health. Um, so that's the colorant for candy, uh, the ready to eat baked goods, ice cream, you know, it's just, it's in a lot of things. It's in tons of things. Um, so, uh, aspartame and the saccharide, sucralose, all of those aspartame, we already know, you know, how bad a lot of those are. Um, I don't have on this slide and I need to go back and change it. I need to add it in the course as well. Weight gain and change to metabolism. These are also known though. So something that's really kind of interesting and the reason why they can also cause gut dysbiosis and they can also cause uh, gas bloating, irritability affecting the guts is because they actually block the, so your, the microorganisms in your gut are not just these little things that just sit there by themselves. They are a complete ecosystem that interacts with your nervous system that interacts with your body, but they also interact with themselves. And these, um, these, uh, non-nutritive sweeteners actually stop those. It's kind of like they paralyze them from being able to communicate with each other. So that's part of the reason, part of the way that they're able to keep themselves in balance and check. And if they can't communicate, they can't do that. So it literally breaks that down. Like their microorganism is an entire ecosystem in itself. We actually have, we have more microorganisms in our body than we have cells, than we have of our own physical cells. So, I mean, that's just mind blowing whenever, whenever I first learned about that. And, and you can just see how powerful it is and how much that, like, obviously that's going to have to affect us. Right. So these sweeteners like this, and then we know we know that sweeteners can, um, they weight gain one because the prebiotics, probiotics in our gut have to communicate with each other. We know if we have too much of the bad, then we're not able to, um, we're not able to regulate our weight gain well. And, you know, part of that system is because certain microflora in our gut, some will process, um, some will end up processing carbs and storing them as, as fat. You know, we have excess, some process fat and, and store them as, as fat. And that's why one thing, so I'm going to, this is what I'm going to finish with. This is what I'm going to finish right here. We're going to talk about like keto diet for a second. And, um, while yes, it can be very effective for weight loss. This is why most, nobody I have spoken to who has, you know, stopped the keto diet and then went back onto it, stopped the keto diet, went back on it, has not had rebound weight gain. Everybody has. And the reason why is that whenever we are on the keto diet, we starve ourselves of the, the carbohydrates, you know, like you need 
healthy carbohydrates. We talked about gluten yesterday. Oh, I know it breaks my heart too. Um, but we talked about, you know, the healthy carbohydrates, your body still needs those carbohydrates. Whenever you deplete yourself of it, your gut says, Ooh, we need to break down more carbohydrates because we're not getting the goods that we need from carbs. So what we're going to do is we're going to up the amount of carbohydrates, uh, the microorganisms that break down the carbohydrates. And then whenever you reintroduce those carbohydrates, you have tons of them sitting there ready to ready to process and store. And then we have a huge weight gain. So that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, I've never recommended a really strong, if somebody's really hard on wanting to do that, then I will work with them and we'll try to like wean them down off of that. But because sometimes, you know, it's, it's where we can get traction and some people that, that keto diet can be easier to follow because you don't have to be as restrictive in the amount that you eat. And, uh, you know, guys, this is just my thing, but I'd never restrict vegetables in anybody. Like if I'm still hungry, I'll eat tons of vegetables. And, you know, until I, um, until I'm not hungry anymore. Um, so, or fats or healthy fats too. Um, but so weight gain in that regard. And then also, um, the aspartame, there was one other thing that I kind of wanted to, to talk about on that, but like I said, we'll end the keto. So there's more we can go into, obviously it's kind of something I've forgotten about, but we're at the one hour mark pretty much anyhow. Um, let me go ahead and open it up for questions or comments, anything that you would like to add. I believe I'm going to start trying to do these pretty regularly. Uh, meaning every, I think Friday might be good because I know a lot of individuals who are still working full time. Um, sometimes they have administrative hours in the afternoon on Fridays. So I might do, I might continue to do like a three to four o'clock, something like that on Friday evenings. And then Saturdays, um, I don't think I'll probably do every Saturdays because just like you all Saturdays are the time with my family and the weekend is, and I don't always want to interrupt that. But I think these are super fun and I'm all on board for free CME. Um, it's something, you know, I host the, um, not host the platform, but because I am accredited to give out CEs, you know, there is a certain amount of work on my end to do that. But I think it's super fun to give some CEs out for free and really just share this information. I'm very, very passionate about about it, just reaching the most amount of people and helping change the most amount of lives and talking about things in this way is, is one of the best ways to make that happen. So, um, that is going to complete today. And yes, it is kind of bothering me that I'm thinking, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Um, oh, one of the other theories on weight gain for, okay, I'm going to add this last thing. One of the other theories on weight gain for, uh, sweeteners is, um, and it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's been probably about about two years since I've read the literature on this, but back in 20, that would have been about 2021, I guess. Um, I know that the last literature said that, and I only use like NIH, uh, double blind studies, that type of stuff, um, and or like meta-analysis and stuff, but that aspartame and sweeteners like that, which, we, you know, we love stevia. Stevia is the natural one. We also know that that stevia probably now we also know messes with the, the gut communication like that. But also whenever our body gets that sweet sugar hit, it tells our brain that. So this is another reason why it causes weight gain. Tells our brain that Ooh, we have something sweet here. We need to uh, we need to go ahead and start you know, trying to get that glucose into the cell and our body goes out, sends out all the insulin and it says there, there isn't that glucose here. Like that isn't here. And, um, in doing that, our body starts getting insulin resistant because it starts saying, uh, -uh you're it's, it's like the, the child who cried wolf. Right. So our body starts saying, uh, uh, you're not, you're not really, you're not really doing that. So then we start having spikes in our glucose or spikes in our glucose start happening. And we start having more, um, issues with insulin resistance and it can, obviously insulin resistance leads to weight gain. So that's another way that it kind of messes with our body. So, you know, if we're going to do sweeteners, I think most people still recommend stevia as a pretty safe thing, um, but definitely in moderation. And I don't believe, I think it's probably just like anything else that whenever we come up with something that's really great, it tends to not be right. <laughs> like look at where we're at with vapes and stuff like that. So I'm totally left turn on that with the, with the vaping, but you know, vaping, vaping came out. Oh, it's so much healthier. I'm not, I'm not smoking anymore. I'm just vaping. And I was like, and eh, I don't know about that. It seems like it's healthier, but it's not. Now we know that it's killing people's lungs faster than cigarettes in some scenarios. So, um, all right guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know, please let me know if you can't figure out, I'm, I'm really going to be kind of stressing about that on the job form, but 
you all see me like you can message me on Facebook. Sometimes I get a lot of Facebook messages all at once. So it might get pushed down. Um, so give me some time to kind of get to those, but I'll be watching them very closely and, uh, let me know if you're not able, if you do not get an email back from me for your CME credit, I want to make sure that you get that, um, for certain. So just, you know, don't, don't feel like you're bugging me. Just, you know, if you don't see anything the next 24 hours, message me. Okay. Message me and send me, send me an email and I'll be happy to get that to you. Thank you so much for being live guys. And this was super fun. I hope it was something that helped you. Um, somebody said, thank you for doing this. I always loving hearing things from different presenters, taking different perspectives and ways to teach my patients. Awesome. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for that. So that helps, that helps with my cup up. All right, y'all have a very blessed weekend and I will see y'all later.